On November 29, 2025, something happened that shook every major observatory in the United States. And honestly, if you're watching this right now, you should probably hit that subscribe button for Zid Wisdom, because what I'm about to tell you is the kind of story that makes scientists lose sleep. And trust me, you're going to want updates on this. Tonight, we're diving into the strangest astronomical mystery of the decade. And I don't mean strange as in weird-shaped comet or unusual orbit. I mean strange in a way that makes veteran astrophysicists look at their computer screens and go absolutely silent. Because the closer we look at 3i divided by Atlas, the more it stops behaving like anything we've ever seen and starts behaving like something that should not exist naturally. And the newest data just made the situation a thousand times more confusing. So, let's begin with the moment that triggered this entire wave of panic. The discovery of what is now being called the 13th anomaly, a mathematically perfect trajectory match that defies the laws of natural comet physics. Not 10%, not 5%, not 1%, but a match so precise that if it happened by accident, you'd have better odds of being struck by lightning while winning a lottery jackpot. And just so we're clear, that isn't an exaggeration. But before I explain the new anomaly, you need to understand the setup, because what's happening right now between this object and Jupiter is like watching a chess game where one of the pieces suddenly starts moving on its own. Here's the situation. As of this week, 3i divided by Atlas is approaching the giant planet Jupiter, and on March 16th, 2026, it will reach its closest point. That's less than four months from today. Astronomers across the U.S., from the Lowell Observatory in Arizona to the Keck facilities in Hawaii, have been feeding data into NASA's JPL Horizons system. And when hundreds of observatories provide consistent numbers, you know something real is happening. According to that combined data, 3i divided by Atlas is expected to pass Jupiter at roughly 33.21 million miles, now at first, that sounds like a lot. 33 million miles? That's nowhere near a collision. But distance isn't the part that's blowing everyone's minds. What matters is where this object is passing, because it's traveling right across a boundary known as Jupiter's hill radius, an invisible shell in space where Jupiter's gravity exactly balances the sun's. Think of it as Jupiter's gravitational territory. Inside this zone, Jupiter is king. Outside it, the sun dominates everything. And here's where things start to get insane. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, analyzing the same orbital data, ran the numbers independently. His calculated hill radius for Jupiter on March 16th? 33.24 million miles. The difference between NASA's projected pass distance and Loeb's hill radius estimate? Just 35,000 miles. To the average person, that number means nothing. But in astronomical calculations, that gap is microscopic. It's like firing a missile from Los Angeles blindfolded, spinning in circles, and still landing it within 0.1% of the target on the other side of the country. Even NASA scientists admit the probability of this happening by pure accident is less than 0.004%. But hold up, that's just the first layer of weirdness. The deeper layer, the part that keeps experts awake at night, is that 3i divided by Atlas should not even be on this exact trajectory to begin with. Because, for the past several months, it has been experiencing non-gravitational acceleration. Now, let me break that down in a way that isn't boring. Celestial objects move based on gravitational forces. The sun pulls them, planets pull them, nothing else does. That's how the universe works. Except, 3i divided by Atlas is breaking that rule. In October and early November, multiple observatories recorded movement that simply didn't match gravitational models. The object was accelerating changing direction in ways impossible to explain by natural forces alone. The numbers released were staggering, a measured acceleration around 5 times 10 to the power of negative 7 AU per day squared. That is not subtle, that is not barely detectable. That is a shove, like something pushed the object. And here's the part that sent a shockwave through the scientific community. That acceleration changed the object's path by around 62,000 miles. Which brace yourself is the exact adjustment needed to take 3i divided by Atlas from where it was naturally heading to a path that leads directly into Jupiter's hill radius. Not near it, not close to it, not more or less in the area. Exactly there. Now pause for a moment and ask yourself this. How does a natural, icy comet flying through space for millions of years perform a trajectory correction equivalent to a precise space maneuver? You think that sounds wild? It gets even crazier. 
Right along Jupiter's hill radius are regions called Lagrange points, the most stable gravitational balance zones in the entire Jupiter Sun system. These are the cosmic parking spots, where spacecraft can sit with almost zero fuel consumption. Space agencies use these spots all the time for telescopes, weather satellites, and long-term observation missions. So imagine this. An interstellar object shows signs of acceleration, adjusts its course by exactly the amount required, and then heads directly toward the region of space, where intelligent civilizations would place satellites. If you're not getting chills right now, trust me the scientists are. And hey, before we go deeper, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Zid Wisdom. When stuff like this is happening in real time, missing an update could mean missing history being written. Now let's talk about the big question everyone is arguing about. What could possibly cause this? There are currently four explanations, but every single one comes with problems that make it hard to accept. Let's start with the most boring one. The calculations are wrong. Maybe the trajectory data is off. Maybe we don't understand the non-gravitational forces properly. Maybe Jupiter's influence is different than expected. But here's why most experts don't buy that. NASA's JPL Horizon system uses inputs from 230 plus observatories worldwide. You do not get a fluke result that hundreds of observatories all accidentally agree on. Error margins exist, yes, but they're nowhere near big enough to account for a perfect 62,000 mile correction right into the hill radius doorway. The second explanation is the one traditional astronomers want to believe. Natural comet outgassing. When ice pockets inside a comet heat up, gas shoots out like mini jets. Those jets can push the comet around a little. But here's the problem. Outgassing is random, chaotic, unpredictable. Not a single instance in history shows outgassing performing a maneuver with this level of precision. No comet has ever fired jets that produce a perfect, deliberate course correction toward a gravity sweet spot. It's like shaking a soda can and expecting the fizz to push it across a room, hit a button on the wall, and unlock the door. That's how unlikely the precision is. The third explanation is the one most scientists reluctantly accept because it's the least crazy. Coincidence. Maybe this is just random luck. Maybe after billions of years, one interstellar object was bound to pass a planet at exactly the right distance. But here's where Avi Loeb's argument comes in like a punch to the gut. We've only ever detected three interstellar objects. Three. Not 3,000. Not 300. Three. And the third one just happens to pull off a 1 in 26,000 event? That's not coincidence. That's suspicious. And then, we arrive at the fourth explanation. The one no one wants to say on camera. The one that turns calm academic debates into heated arguments. Artificial manoeuvre. Technological propulsion. Intentional navigation. Look, no one is claiming a spaceship. No one is claiming aliens. No one is claiming intelligence. But the facts don't lie. We have an interstellar object that accelerated unnaturally, adjusted its path, and is now headed into the one region you would target for low-energy satellite deployment around the largest planet in our solar system. Even scientists who roll their eyes at the word extraterrestrial are struggling to explain this away. But to be fair, there is zero direct evidence of technology. No radio signals, no heat signatures, no visible thrusters, nothing except math. Nothing except probability nothing except behavior. And behaviors can be deceiving. But here's where things shift from strange coincidence to deeply concerning. Because as astronomers continued analyzing the latest trajectory data through November 29, 2025, something emerged that wasn't in the earlier models. It wasn't just that 3i divided by Atlas was heading toward Jupiter's hill radius. It wasn't just that it performed a perfect 62,000 mile correction. It wasn't even the precision of the approach. It was the timing, because based on the new velocity readings, the object will reach the hill radius region exactly during a period when Jupiter's gravitational alignment is ideal for what NASA calls a low-energy capture window, a moment when even a tiny push could lock an object into a temporary orbit around Jupiter. If that sounds like science fiction, you should know NASA itself uses these windows when sending probes to the outer planets. They are rare, they are narrow, and they are extremely valuable because they let a spacecraft save enormous amounts of fuel. And this interstellar object? It's arriving at the window's peak. Not early, not late, perfectly synchronized. The question practically screams at you. How does a natural object time itself like that? Because the margin here is absurdly small. If the object were just a few hours faster or slower, the gravitational geometry wouldn't align. 
It would simply slingshot past Jupiter like every other harmless visitor. But no, it's arriving during the one gravitational moment when capture is possible. A moment NASA engineers spend years calculating. And this is where the debate turns intense. In the last 48 hours, multiple researchers quietly admitted off the record that the object is behaving exactly like something performing a gravity assist maneuver. For you watching this right now, that means it's doing the same kind of trajectory trick that spacecraft use to gain speed or change direction using a planet's gravity. Voyager 1 did it. Voyager 2 did it. New Horizon did it. Cassini did it. Human space agencies do this deliberately. Nature does not do this deliberately. Yet 3i divided by Atlas is doing it. And again, we have zero radio signals, zero thermal signatures, zero visual evidence of propulsion. So either this is the most unbelievable natural coincidence in astronomical history, or something is manipulating this object in ways we cannot detect. If you're still listening, hit that like button and subscribe to Zid Wisdom, because in the next few months, this mystery is going to explode, and you're not going to want to miss what comes next. Now let's move deeper, because what comes after March 16th is where things get truly bizarre. According to the model released last night, if Jupiter's gravity affects 3i divided by Atlas the way the numbers predict, the object won't simply pass by. Instead, it could be redirected into what's being called a transient resonant loop, a temporary orbital pattern that keeps the object near Jupiter for weeks or even months before it's released back toward the outer solar system. To understand how insane that is, the probability of a random interstellar object falling into a resonant loop around Jupiter is so low that most astronomers don't even bother calculating it. It would require the perfect distance, the perfect speed, the perfect angle, the perfect gravitational timing, and the perfect adjustment beforehand. And yet, as of today's models, everything lines up. And remember this object already performed one perfect course correction in early November. Which brings us to the next unnerving observation scientists aren't talking about publicly. The acceleration stopped. Once the object reached the corrected trajectory, the non-gravitational acceleration vanished. No more pushes, no more deviations. It's now gliding the way a spacecraft would after finishing a burn. You don't have to be an engineer to see why that's suspicious. Spacecraft perform a maneuver, then shut down engines to coast toward the destination. Comets don't. Comets shred themselves, evaporate, wobble, tumble, vent gas. They do everything except execute a precise burn and then go calm. But 3i divided by Atlas did. This is why scientists in the US are now split into two unofficial camps. Camp A says, this is all just coincidence. Stop making it weird. Camp B says, we are watching something behave like a guided object. But here's the twist almost nobody knows. A small group of analysts inside NASA, people who requested total anonymity, told journalists that something strange appeared in the earliest images of the object taken by high-resolution telescopes, a flat reflectivity profile unlike typical comets. No tail. No dust plume. No volatile jets. Just a dark, smooth object with a glossy reflectance that didn't match any known cometary category. But since the resolution was low, and nobody wanted to trigger public panic after the Oumuamua debate, they ignored it. Now, in hindsight, ignoring it looks like a mistake, because the same analysts now believe 3i divided by Atlas might be metallic or at least partly metallic, which would make natural outgassing even more unlikely, which would make the acceleration anomaly even harder to dismiss, which would make the precise trajectory almost impossible to explain. Put all that together, a metallic object, non-gravitational acceleration, a perfect 62,000 mile correction, arrival during a low energy capture window, direct interception of Jupiter's hill radius, potential entry into a resonant orbital loop. This isn't normal. This isn't natural. This is intentional behavior unless every branch of physics suddenly decided to play a prank on us. Now let's look at the possibility no one wants to admit publicly, but everyone whispers privately, what if this isn't one object? What if it's carrying something? Because Lagrange points, especially L1 and L2 near Jupiter, are the ideal places to drop instruments or devices. If a civilization wanted to monitor a solar system without being detected, these are the exact spots they would use. And think about this. If a craft needed to release smaller probes, it would do it at the hill radius boundary. That's where gravitational forces are balanced, making deployment easier and more stable. And guess where 3i divided by Atlas is headed? Right there. This is why several deep space telescopes, including the Subaru Telescope in Hawaii 
and the Gemini North Observatory have quietly begun scheduling additional observation blocks starting December 1st. They want to see if anything separates from the object during approach. If something detaches, even something tiny, it changes everything. Of course, scientists are cautious. They always say the same thing. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Totally fair. But the problem is, the evidence is lining up in a way that makes the extraordinary explanation look more reasonable than the ordinary one. And we're not done yet, because a brand new theory emerged this morning from a group of orbital engineers in Colorado. What if 3i divided by Atlas isn't aiming for Jupiter at all? What if Jupiter is just the slingshot? Because based on early simulations, if the object uses Jupiter correctly, it could be redirected toward the inner solar system, specifically Earth orbit, by late 2026 or early 2027. That idea has not been publicly released yet, but the simulations exist, and they are terrifyingly precise. Before we go further, if you haven't already, hit that like button and subscribe to Zid Wisdom, because if this object is performing a guided maneuver, then every update over the next four months is going to matter. Now let's talk about what comes next. Starting mid-December, new radar readings from NASA's Goldstone facility will begin scanning 3i divided by Atlas. These scans can detect shape, contours, and possibly rotation. If the object has flat surfaces, geometric symmetry, or unnatural reflectivity, this mystery goes from strange comet to unidentified technological object. If the object splits into smaller pieces, same result. If the object accelerates again, even briefly, its over-natural explanations collapse. And if the object enters a temporary orbit around Jupiter, well, history will mark March 16th. 2026 as the day humanity officially realized we are not alone. Until then, all we can do is watch, collect data, and try our best not to jump to conclusions. But you watching this? You deserve the truth, even if that truth is still unfolding. So stay sharp, stay curious, and whatever happens next, stay with Zid Wisdom, because this channel will be following every new data point, every NASA update, every Harvard analysis, and every anomaly as it happens. Because the universe is speaking, and for the first time, it might be speaking back.